I'm Melise Bronzo. And I'm Javier Calvo. And you are welcome to this week's edition of Gate Update. Last Wednesday, during the free period, all students were invited to a solidarity event in the chapel to address the racist occurrences on campus following the election. President Chop, Dean Roloff, Dean Grinnell, and Dean Johnson, as well as SGA President David Kuznets and coalition leader Michael Walden, spoke to an audience that outnumbered the one for Dance Fest. The crowd of faculty and students was so large that it flowed out onto the academic quad all the way to Lawrence Hall. The speeches given by the two students were particularly moving and sparked a sense of community and responsibility that students discussed in classes and amongst themselves through the rest of the week. The Colgate community began taking the first steps in fighting racism on campus by gathering on Saturday at the Hamilton Village Green, across from the Colgate Inn at noon. The Unity March went from the Green up to the Coop and seceded in uniting students against any racial, sexual, or religious prejudice. Following the march, all participants signed the Birmingham Pledge in which they all vowed to reject and denounce social injustice. Students from Professor Nicole Simpson Immigration FSEM have taken their learning outside their classroom. Professor Simpson, who tries to find service learning opportunities for the students to reinforce what they learned in class, handed the freshmen an article on the Syracuse Post Standard about Bhutan refugees. In the 1990s, the nation of Bhutan exiled the ethnic minority of Nepalese. More than half were given the opportunity to resettle in the United States, 450 of them in Syracuse. The students raised supplies and money to help the refugees with various household commodities that to many are unaffordable. $700 were raised and 35 families were helped. This Saturday, CSA will be hosting their yearly Island Vibes party at the Palace. Spin is Inc., hailing from Brooklyn, New York, will be on the turntables mixing soca, dance hall, reggae, and hip-hop. The party will start at 11 and go to 2.30 a.m. This year's theme is Candyland. Make sure to come dressed to impress. The popular fairy tale ballet written by Tchaikovsky, the Nutcracker, will be playing at sorry. The popular fairy tale ballet written by Tchaikovsky, the Nutcracker, will be playing at the Colgate University Bremer Theater. The Christmas fairy tale will be performed by the Colgate Ballet Company, which features both Colgate students and children from the Hamilton area. Performances will be held on Friday and Saturday at 7 p.m. Admission is free. Women's basketball, coming off of a 1-29 2007-2008 season record, tipped off this season with a home opener versus Mount St. Mary's this past Friday night. The last lead of the game for the Raiders was when they were ahead 8-7 early in the first half. It was all downhill from there. Mount ended up winning 60-39, a margin of over 20 points. Freshman starting point guard Candace Green led the team with 10 points. On a lighter note, the team played at Ryder on Saturday for what Tri-Captain Gretchen Polinski called a much improved game. We played so much better. The team lost by 12 points. Sophomore starter Sammy Kozlowski scored a game-high 26 points. This past Thursday, the Colgate-Cornell rivalry boiled up as the Raiders men's hockey team took on the Big Red at Star Rink. Despite outshooting Cornell 41-18, the Raiders fell to Cornell 4-1 as the Big Red capitalized on what coach Don Vaughn called four glaring mistakes. On Saturday, the Raiders traveled to Cornell. The final score after two overtimes was tied at two. Both results put the Raiders 1-2-1 entering this weekend's face-offs against the Dartmouth, Big Green, and the Harvard Crimson, Friday and Saturday respectively at 7 p.m. at Star Rink. The season opener will be a buzzer beater for the men's basketball team. Sophomore star Mike Venezia found the bottom of the net just as time ran out on Monday night, giving Colgate their first victory of the season versus Central Connecticut. The final score was 58-57. Venezia totaled 10 points in the contest while teammate Willie Morse put up a team-high 12. Alex Woodhouse also added to 8 points and pulled down 10 rebounds, the last of which gave Venezia his opportunity for the game winner. The men will take on Dartmouth on the road this Saturday at 7. The Colgate men's soccer team entered the Patriot League tournament first in the regular season and lived up to the expectation. After defeating Lehigh in the semifinals, the Raiders faced Holy Cross, who had beaten American in the previous round as well. With a 2-1 score, the Raiders defeated Holy Cross and became the Patriot League champions. The Raiders are now headed to the NCAA soccer tournament, where they will face Boston College in the first round. <laughs> Hi, I'm Julie Gibbons and this is your weather update for the week. Wednesday will be mild due to the lingering high pressure system which will be replaced by a weak low pressure system on Thursday, causing cloudy conditions and a chance of rain. 
Friday will be cooler with night lake effect flurries or rain. Saturday will start off cool but will warm due to a high pressure system. Sunday a ridge comes in which causes warming. Monday and Tuesday should be mild as well. This image is a GFS model for Friday which shows the low pressure system that causes the weather on Thursday and the encroaching high pressure system coming in on Saturday. We've been having a lot of lake effect precipitation. I'd like to explain a little bit about lake effect snow. It occurs when cool air comes over a warmer body of water, which then creates precipitation and snow coming off of it. Thank you, Unisys and the University of Illinois Department of Atmospheric Science. Thank you for watching. If your group has events that you would like to promote, email us at cutv@mail.colgate.edu. For more on these and other stories, check out colgate.edu and stay tuned for next week's edition of Gate Update, where, where you're, you're always, always in the know. know.